Hi there, um, thank you for watching us. Um, I'm Alison Avila, one of the curators of Loops Expanded. Um, and this is the first of the seven interviews we are going to have um, with the artists. We had the pleasure of um, selecting and inviting to be with us um, in our Lisbon um, season exhibition. Um, Loops Expanded is an international network with different curators and partners uh, in five different countries, in Europe and South America. And we define it out together a common um, list of selected artists and works to be exhibited uh, throughout these countries in 2020 and 21. And here in Lisbon, me and Edith Batri, we are um, the creators for the local exhibition in partnership with the National Museum of Contemporary Art and its um, head of creatorship, let's say, uh, Emilia Tavares. So we all together have this final list and we are kickstarting the, the exhibition now in October, uh, the 7th of October. And today here in this recording interview, I have the pleasure of hosting the first of the seven artists being, in, uh, being interviewed for you to know a bit more about him, um, which is Shahar Marcus, all the way from Israel, right Shahar? Yes, from Tel Aviv. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and for your availability for this conversation. Um, this is a way to, to explore a bit more, actually, to share a, a teaser about your work. This is not your first work. You have a career and you talk a bit about it. Um, but most of all, an opportunity for the people figure out a bit of, about yourself. Um, go after your work because um, you have our website you have, with our other works, shaharmarcus.com. So this is an invitation for you who's watching us to also jump there and, and have a look on, on Shahar uh, works. And maybe this is the perfect hook for my first question to share um, with you, Shahar, which is mm -hmm. um, for me as not necessarily as a creator, but as a viewer, um, it's interesting to see that your works in general, uh, before big, we are talk about it uh, right after that, um, they seem to suggest an, um, a connection with the good mood, not to say the uh, humor. Um, and this, at least for me, it's one of the most difficult topics to be explored by art or by contemporary art. Um, isn't always easy to connect the perception of art to this positive lightness you can see in your uh, other works. So I'd like to start this conversation with you, asking your, your approach on this. Um, why does this happen in your opinion? And why have you decided to 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 go through this path in 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 your work um it didn't start this way my first work were performances were uh, very serious performances a lot about uh, my body and the limitations of my body uh, it happens it happened uh, in a way that first of all i always have humor in my life outside of art I'm, I'm usually very funny. <laughs> I like to tell jokes and to hear jokes. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, even when I teach in my university, it's usually a very funny lesson in my way, because this is, this is the way I am. This is the kind of my uh, mentality. It happened that um, I started a work, I wanted to do an action painting about Jackson Pollock. I wanted to do a tribute to it. And I did it very seriously in a way because I made a gigantic uh, pita bread and I took a, a, a dish like falafel. We have a different, uh, in Israel, uh, uh, we have another dish which is very popular. We call it sabich. Uh, it's made out of eggplants and tomatoes and, uh, and boiled eggs and a lot of things and I did with tahina sauce and other hot sauce, I did an action painting on a very big pita. And I did it very seriously. I was thinking about painting and I was thinking about Jackson Pollock. And it came out when people watched it, it says, it's funny, it's so funny. And, and I, I wasn't thinking about funny at all, but it came out funny. And then I did other works and I, I understood that humor is a tool. Humor is a tool to talk about uh, things that sometimes are uh, difficult, like 
uh, people, uh, when they see something which is funny, even if it touches uh, some very serious matter or stuff, it takes down the, the barriers. It's like uh, uh, people are not coming with antagonism towards uh, art which, which has humor in it. So it is, humor is really a tool which is enabling you to talk uh, about uh, issues like uh, racism, you could talk about uh, um, uh, occupation even, you can talk about political stuff with humor that if you, if you were not using humor, maybe people would say, oh, I don't want to hear again about this activism and whatever. And then the artist is, is, is in a way, uh, if he has this humor too, he could, uh, people are listening to him more, I think. The, the, the humor helps uh, mm -hmm. to talk about that stuff. Um, and also I will tell you that even when I'm doing humor, I'm, I'm so serious about it. I'm like, I'm totally serious. It's sometimes when we are shooting a video art, the whole staff could be like 25 people around me are laughing and I'm the only one on the set who's not laughing, who's so, who's so serious at that time doing this, this action, which is from outside looks very humor. But for me, I think when you do as a performer an action that might be funny, that has humor in it, but if you do it in to total uh, consideration, total uh, consciousness, um, total uh, uh, of um, being there at that moment, then then it becomes really funny, I think, from the outside. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something that I learned through the years, that you don't need to be funny in order to make funny funny things. Yeah. I loved, I loved your, your explanation, not only because of your personal perspective, because this is exactly the dialogue you used to set between mm -hmm. the work and, and the viewers in, in, in general way. Like um, one thing is what you, what you are doing for, for yourself and another, the way people is going to, to, to understand or to capture the message. But the point that the humor is a powerful tool to introduce uh, sensible, let's say, uh, topics or to make it easier to jump on them. Um, but on the other hand, um, we, this is a, also a way to tease people to go to National Museum in, of Contemporary Art in Lisbon and actual, actually um, watch, see, get to know your work, uh, which is DIG, uh, work from, from last year, um, that I would say that it goes in a um, totally opposite way, uh, uh, if you permit me to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, DIG brings a very different perspective the video shares a great feeling of anxiety or impossibility, at least for me, um, or even hopelessness. Something that is highlighted by the, mo the montage and the close-ups and the zoo wins. Um, what motivated you to produce it? Uh, and what did you intend to, 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 to cover, to convey with this visual construction? Okay. Uh, I would say that DIG was a part of a solo exhibition that I had. Uh, last year in the um, Eret Israel Museum in Tel Aviv, it was a very big exhibition which I worked. I think for the past for the past four or five years, I've been working on this exhibition, and the exhibition is talking about. It's called Data Mining. That's the name of the exhibition, and you can look Data Mining and Chachama because you will find it, uh, the page in the Israel in the Eretz Israel Museum. Um, it was talking about the artist as an archaeology, uh, ar ar uh, as um, and the whole uh, exhibition talks about um, digging up, uh, looking for something under uh, the ground, and then um, finding it and uh, presenting it to the public. So I found very similar between uh, an artist, the way artist is working, and the way archaeologist is, is working. Uh, and I did some uh, eight, nine video works during those four or five years, which is talking about 
um, about on the surface, under the surface, and one of the work was dig, and it was also in a way uh, very different even in the exhibition, because all the exhibitions and the videos were in a way um, slow, um, serious, but um, there was some fear in them, but the, the, the dynamic and the, and the rhythm of the other works was very, uh, how would I say, plateau. Mm -hmm. This work, this work, we, we needed to make a special room for it, mm -hmm. to, to isolate it from the exhibition because of the volume, because of the tension. But I really love this work. In my exhibition, it was um, uh, projected on the floor and people came into a black room and suddenly they were standing around this work and everything there was like chaos and um, tension and, 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 and fear and, uh, and, and... We don't know what's of, going to happen. You don't know what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, and, um, and, it, and, and it was, of course, part of the exhibition. It really helps to make the exhibition uh, to be wider, to have other as aspects. Um, and I think it's the only work that uh, um, in the exhibition that the connection maybe to archaeology is not really uh, one, one to one, you know, uh, but, but it was important for me, I would say. I, I shot this work already in 2018, but I didn't edit it yet until, until the exhibition, until 2019, until like two months before the exhibition. So, um, so I shot it in 2018 and I didn't look at the footage because I was busy with other things. And um, um, there was another question the, that we talked that we will talk about the loop. So I don't want to talk about loop now, but mm -hmm. uh, but the loop was really was, part a, of was already there. Was already there. Um, well, um, it's just an um, amazing piece of art, of uh, uh, for sure. What you achieved mm -hmm. with with dig, and what you said about uh, producing it or shooting it in two thousand eighteen um, makes me. Um, come up with another question which is when you see uh, uh, when you're um, having experience of, of watching it um, you get a bit confused like is this uh, real this is uh, has this been documented in a real setting <laughs> was it produced um, mm -hmm. so um, why have you choose to to do it this way because you you you, you cannot yeah. uh, leave uh, the meeting <laughs> the exhibition room <laughs> with the uncertainty about it? Um, first of all, I don't have works, I think, I didn't do yet, works that I didn't shoot myself. That, that the, 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 the performance or the video is not mine, not my idea in a way. Um, so I don't, use, uh, I don't use footage in my work and I don't go with the camera and catch his thing and um, I know other people doing it. They do it sometimes great. I'm not this kind of artist. I'm always, um, I'm like a director in a way. I'm always, even when I do a photography, it's always a stage photography. So what I did, uh, first of all, uh, I saw a lot of YouTubes that have this situation in a way. I saw many YouTubes of uh, people in, uh, uh, places that there was earthquakes and stuff and and I saw uh, people are looking you know between the barriers and and uh, I so the YouTube was uh, in a way inspiration for me um, Interesting. and uh, when we thought about the idea first of all just for you to know I'm one of the people there I'm what there are four people there one of them is me. Okay. So, because because it's really hard for me not to be a performer in my videos, but you can't really know that I'm there because uh, when I talk to the uh, photographer, 
uh, the video photographer, I told him three things. First of all, I don't want to see faces of the people. You never know who are those people. Second, I want you to, there was no um, tripod. Usually in my videos, like all, all of my videos are with tripod, very statical, the camera is always moving. And this time I told him, you hold the camera. I showed him some YouTubes. I told him, let's make it like it's really happening, like, and, and go around and, and, and push your camera inside. Um, and the third thing, I knew it's going to be a loop. I knew uh, uh, when I planned it. So we always, we did like three scenes, I think. Uh, we did it three times. And we always start the video from a, a, the camera is on the back on the, uh, of, of one of, of, of me, I think. It's on my back. And then he always cut the scene when the camera is back on my, on my back. Then it's easy to make the, the endless loop that you don't know exactly when, where, where is the cat. You don't know where is the cat. Mm -hmm. I know where is the cat because I, mm -hmm. because I edited in yeah. a way. But, but we, I, I think it was very um, um, uh, smart move to know that this work is going to be a loop. And you have another question about loop and I will talk about it right now. I think I will talk about why did I choose this loop? This loop is not only um, you know, something for, uh, formal. Uh, it's, it's not just a tool. Uh, the whole idea of the work is that those people are digging and digging and looking and actions and don't find and, and it's endless and it never ends. And for your opinion, they can do it for the next 10 years now and they will not stop. So the loop is really an idea here, which is, uh, really helps to close the video. I, I, I can't see this video not in a loop. In a way, um, when I did it in the, even when I did it in the exhibition, uh, I sent you a five minutes work which will run in a loop in a way. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, I, I didn't trust the streamers at the exhibition. So I made a 90 minutes video of this loop in order that every 90 minutes, the, I don't know, they say that they had a great streamer and that you won't see it, but I've, I've seen in my life, I've seen many things. So I gave mm -hmm. them a 90 minutes and that means that once in 90 minutes, maybe, you get a blink that something is is changing there. Um, so, but I perfectly see your point, um, and it's, it's super interesting to to hear from you the explanation, um, because just as you said, and this was one of my questions, um, I was going to ask you this: um, when have you, um, when or why have you decided that this was going to be a loop? But actually. The loop was at the inception of your idea. Yes. So yes. since you knew that this was our trying to, to share or to, or to communicate all the, mm, the work and all the process uh, was a consequence of this original uh, idea. So it was not about the mm -hmm. format itself. The format was a consequence of the, the, the final idea or the initial idea you'd like to, to, to do exactly. it. Exactly. In this sense, I wanted to make a, a loop video. I wanted to make a loop video fr from the start. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have one, one more, more specific question here, which is, what are people talking about during during the, the video? Um, is it something you should be aware of? Uh, but for sure, it was our choice to not not uh, insert the, the, the subtitles. But should be, we be aware of it to have a one more layer? Of what we're sharing? No, it's gib it's gibberish. The, there is no. They're not talking any language. Uh, the reason for that is that I didn't want the video to be. A, um, I wanted to be universal. I wanted in a way that it could be. It could happen anywhere. If they were talking in Hebrew, then they say they would say, look at the video and says, "Ah, oh, it's something that happened in this place in Israel." 
if they are talking in English or Arab, ah, those people are this, I wanted it to be um, as universal as it could be. I told them, you are talking now in gibberish, in total gibberish. Of course, even when you do gibberish, the language of the country that you're in is in a way affected. I mean, it doesn't sound like Japanese gibberish, but uh, I didn't want that this video will be um, will be not, not universal in a way. I didn't want it to be local. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's part of the fact that uh, although there are texts in my, in my videos sometimes, most of my videos uh, are, uh, do not have text. You can understand everything from the action. Um, I, I come from uh, visual art. I don't come from theater. And I don't come from uh, uh, movies. So even my work is a video art or a, or a moving image. Uh, I try to say what I want uh, without speaking, just with the the image, which is enough. It, it's enough. You can you can say a lot just by by showing a strong image. And then that's what I like about it. That someone from Germany or someone from Japan or someone from Colombia can look at the video and each one can relate to it in a way. You don't have to have this language because language is always uh, local and says a lot about culture. Uh, sometimes I, I want that, sometimes I sure. use language. Can create a bias. Yeah, but in this, uh, in, 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 in this work for me, I want it to be as as universal as it can be that someone will come to the work and will know nothing about her and will just look at it and say, wow, I feel this way or I feel this way. And this is what's nice about, I think, uh, visual art, that my work can be in Japan or in uh, Russia and can be understood in a way. If I was a singer, for example, singing in Hebrew, then I'm really stuck in my country to sing those songs. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm really happy that, that I'm, I'm, I'm in visual art and I can go all over the world with my ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is probably, if you permit me to say, this is one of the wonders of, of, um, of a visual art in particular, because for sure art tends to be universal. But when you skip the need of um, oral language or oral expression, you are being uh, even more uh, universal. And you said um, uh, a few minutes ago, Shahar, that um, since the beginning, you knew that this was going to be a loop, not only because of your idea, but you are going to exhibit this um, in, in, a, in a major exhibition about data mining and the idea of archaeology mm -hmm. or eternal mm -hmm. search or this tension around it. And you also said that being a, a visual artist, yourself, your body, tends to be part uh, of your um, documented performance, let, let, let's uh, frame this way. But let me ask you, uh, besides this, uh, this piece, this work we are uh, exhibiting here uh, in Lisbon, um, to, to, to expand the question. Um, for you, how, how does the, the, the loop format permeate your work, your past work? Um, do you frame the loop as a, as a topic of technical uh, discipline, or a narrative approach, or um, it's more about the transmission of an ongoing idea? It's an interesting question because uh, I don't have many uh, works that are in loop. I can think about another work maybe, but uh, I think for me, loop is more about uh, perception and idea than uh, because you know all of my works are in loops when you go to a museum and you see a projection of my work it's always in loop mm -hmm. it starts it's it's a, but this is not the loop that we're talking about I think. yeah or the, the one that i'm talking about because there's the repetition uh, thing and the sense making thing in, in, in this discussion right yes so i think that uh, for my opinion when you want to make a, a, a loop work it has to come from the idea that this work, the loop, is really a part of it. 
it, 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 because you want to talk about endless action. You want to talk about something that repeats itself on and on and on. And what does it mean that this thing is repeating itself uh, in a way? So for me, it's not something, uh, it's not like a tool or technical. For me, a real loop is something which is totally a part of the work. And uh, what it is, is that because of the conversation with you, uh, I was looking at the, at the questions that you sent me and it gave me the urge to do another loop. <laughs> that was like, oh, interesting. I have an idea for another loop video. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> thought about it. So that is some, something so nice that happened yesterday when I was uh, answering the questions. So uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm feeling honored to, to have you uh, help you to have one more um, insight mm -hmm. or, or idea. Uh, because yes, we have uh, for sure during these seven interviews and besides this, uh, we have a plethora of different interpretations about what uh, a loop should be on a given work. Um, and I just love your, your points on, uh, I know I, I brought this up as well, but uh, it, this is, it comes from you, like what's repetition and what is the intention of create meaning around a work that which is almost closed um, into itself, right? And, and, and you create this meaning over time through the repetition, not the opposite. Um, this tells me- uh, I, 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 would, I would say the loop is an integral part of the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's- and, and, and we faced this during the, our, our selection process because we had more than 250 uh, submissions now uh, from 43 countries, and if I'm not wrong. Wow, and I'm, I'm honored. I didn't know that so many people were. Yeah, this, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm suspicious uh, to say for sure, because we have this conversation as a, a creator, but it's just an excellent work. It's one more reason to use this interview as a teaser for you who's watching to, to visit um, uh, Museu do Chiado, National Museum of Contemporary Art, to see it. Um, because yes, we, we face exactly these situations um, quite often, which is this is a loop because it's intended to be exhibited on continuous play. But okay, but this is not exactly the point because this is not the meaning you're trying to, 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 to transmit. Okay, it's up to each artist to say the way they want it. This is not a question. The, uh, everyone is, has the freedom to, to do so. But for this project, this was not the goal so that probably that's why we're here having this conversation and understanding even better what you did beforehand um this also um, um lead me to to share with you one more question which is um mm -hmm. we keep talking about this in this project it looks expanded which is uh the loop is at the foundations of Muji, an image historical construction this comes from the very beginning even even when you talk about mechanical movement to create uh, moving images and still is more present than ever in your daily lives um do you have any <laughs> uh tip or uh, view on this like what explain the strength uh, of this format of this approach for so long I, I didn't. Have, can you repeat the question? At the end, what was the question? What explain in your in your opinion um, the strength of the loop format of the loop approach for so mm -hmm. long, considering that the loop comes from wow. the very beginning of the moving image history, and is mm -hmm. still present up to these days um, in a very consistent form, almost on a daily basis. We are we I, are impacted I, I, by I, I, by loop content. Let's say. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the fact that you're uh, watching the sequence again and again as a viewer, uh, I think that each sequence, you have another uh, notion, another understanding. And, and, and it's, it's very interesting, I think, that when you look at, the, at, at, at a loop video, which is, uh, which I don't know, you, three to five minutes, this, each loop or something like that. I think that each time you watch it, you have a, a, another notion, another another layer. So I think in this way, uh, this is this is what uh, as a viewer 
is fascinating in watching a, a, a loop a video or loop sequence or loop image. Uh, and, and when it's very, very short, for example, when you have like uh, 20 seconds, and so it has the feeling, uh, you have the feeling as a viewer that you want to catch, you want to catch the, the sequence, to catch the, and it's, again, it's like running away and it starts all over uh, again. And, and it's, imagine yourself a, a vision, a vision or a vision, a moving image of someone who is going to jump out of the building. And you see the moment that he's um, coming to the edge, almost jumping, and then it starts again. And you always, with your mind, complete what will happen if he jumps. And you have it also, just for you to know, uh, many times you have it in, in uh, news, on the news, that you see something in a loop and, and like, uh, think about the loop of an accident, for example. That you see something is happening, an accident which is happening. Each time you watch it, you're amazed that this car is coming and hitting something, and, and you think that maybe next time something else will happen. But no, it's again and again and again, and it hypnotizes you in a way. So the loop has a lot of power on us, the viewers. Your comment took took me to a totally different place, uh, <laughs> a good one. Um, because in, in, in psychology, we used to say that when you repeat a given behavior or a given action, expecting to have a different result, you can call it insanity. But um, when it comes to art, we are um, maybe it's rather the opposite. We are just exploring more and more and more. And you are really going to different places over time. Um, so thank you for this um, so 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 rich insight and and, and point of view on, on, on this. Um, I just have two more questions for you, Shahar, before closing it. Um, I don't know if you'd uh, like to highlight some specific part of your um, creating or production process to uh, to before having dig uh, already finished, for instance, if you have that feeling more or less usual, like I think it's done, but then on second thoughts, this is not done yet. I would have to reshoot something. You said that you made the shooting 2018 actually, and you just come back to, to, to raw material one year later. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to, to share a bit more about this uh, to elaborate on this, your process? Yeah, um, first of all, um... I think from the start of my career, I understood that when I'm going out for shooting, I need to know exactly what I'm doing. I'm not the one who will say, okay, let's go out and shoot and see what happens. Um, but in, in the day of shooting or in the day of performance sometimes, because I, sometimes I do live performances, uh, I give a space for uh, uh, how would I say, for chance, for if I see something which is going good, then let's do it. Uh, but I have, a, I have a plan. I have a, a known plan. I know what I'm doing. It's not, I, I don't come with a, like a, a script, but I have a shooting list, which is different. I know what I'm gonna shoot. And I know what I want. But inside it, I leave a little space for uh, for freedom because it needs a little bit freedom. Otherwise, it's really like uh, cinema. Uh, but it's really what I'm doing is performance to the camera. That's most of the time what I'm doing, performance to the camera. Of course, the, I, I also did works which were more cinematic. So <laughs> I work even with a director. And there are sometimes texts, I don't like it so much, but sometimes I understand that that's what the work needs in a way. Uh, I really prefer my works, which has no text in it, only action, uh, strong action. Um, and um, so after, sh after the shooting, uh, usually, um, I don't wait so many months or years to 
edit. Usually I edit it the next month. Uh, at that point with Dig, uh, it was because uh, I didn't know when the exhibition will take place. That's why I didn't touch it because I said, okay, I did it when I would, I thought that also the editing will be very, very simple. Uh, and it was, it was like, uh, because uh, there everything was um, already very known what's going to, to be. Uh, I, I fell in love with the working with the sound editing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do the sound it's just editing. Amazing. Work, it's just amazing. I, I work with other people which are sound, professional sound editor and I think uh, I really got in love with working with sound in my works. Um, and if you permit so, me to say for sure, yes, it made all, all the difference uh, in terms of impact when you're trying to, to figure out what's happening in that ultra specific situation. Uh, but you, you, mm -hmm. you were talking about the, the, the freedom to have the freedom, the time and space while uh, when shooting. Um, did that happen um, when you, and you did the shooting back to 2018? Indeed, uh, of course, because you, uh, the, I was, uh, as I told you, one of the uh, performances performers, sorry, but there were other three people, which I don't know. I mean, I met them at the same day. Uh, I had a nice uh, producer, one of my students, she brought them. Uh, I knew the photographer well, because this is the photographer which I worked for eight years, I think, or 10 years uh, in a way. Uh, so we did a lot of videos together. He knows me and I know him, but the performers I didn't know. And that's what I told you, we, we, we did three, maybe even four sessions, I, I think, until, until we got into a good session. It, 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 it's, it was like, in a way, five minutes of shooting, but it took us like two, three hours to do it because we did it again and again, and then explaining to them, this is what I want, I want you to be. And also I think it took them time and maybe even for me to get into the situation mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to really to really be you know looking and, and to be dirty and and to get into the stuff and it takes time it takes time but i think after two three hours we were already even tired which was good for the work that we were tired and but we were still working and and still you know this um, gibberish thing really what it was in a way uh, we were tired and by sh shouting these gibberish words it was like encouraging us to keep on digging and keep on working because the w what we really wanted to hear is the cut of the of the photographer saying cut and just say, oh, okay now we can rest a little bit um so yeah this is the kind of freedom that i like that happens in in a shooting day Mm -hmm. Amazing, Shahar. Um, just uh, to, to close it, um, sorry that I don't remember by heart, but is mm -hmm. this uh, going to be the first time you have one of your works uh, exhibited here in Portugal? I can't tell you for sure. I, th I think so. Although, <laughs> I, you know, I think I was in, the, is there a festival called FUSO? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I was there once. Okay. But but for sure, it's the biggest show I ever had in a in a, in a museum or gallery. That's mm -hmm. for me for sure in Portugal in in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, even if I was in some festival someday, ten years ago, but this is the first time I'm 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 in a museum or a big gallery in Lisbon. That's Amazing. Sure. So this is one more reason for people to 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 go to the National Museum of Contemporary Art to see it, to take part of this exhibition. And it's funny because Fuso, if you, if you remember well, um, mm -hmm. Fuso is produced uh, by Duplacena, who is also producing this project in partnership with the National Museum of Contemporary Art. So mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, if you permit the joke, uh, a small loop connecting the dots here and you're back 
back again to the same uh, to a similar circumstance here uh, uh, in Portugal. Just let me ask you, Jair, if you'd like to share like a, a final comment or a message to, to the public, we'll be able to 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 get to know uh, your 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 work um, here at Loops Expanded. Uh, first of all, um, as you said, uh, this work in Loop uh, Dig is very different from my other works. I have other works which are some some of them are political, some of them are funny, some of them are real performance. Uh, I worked for many years with a, with another performance artist. Her name is Nezaket Ekiji. We did a lot of works together in the last eight years, a lot of exhibitions. So you can see that also in my website, or you can just Google my name. You know, it's I, I have all my works in in Vimeo. Mm -hmm. I as, as an artist, I can tell you that uh, I think almost ninety percent of my works, and I have a lot of them, are free online. I sometimes put a little uh, uh, watermark on it, but I really uh, share my works with the audience. People, if they want to see my works, they can easily find it in Vimeo. Uh, many of my works, because I, I believe that an artist should show his works. I don't believe in hiding them in my computer. And I don't, I'm not afraid of people stealing my work or I don't know, or abuse it in a way. If they want, they can do that. Uh, and I, I'm i very, very generous with the, with the public of, of showing my work. So it's very easy to see my works. And hopefully if you like this work, you can go and look for my other works and I will be very happy. And I also want to thank the whole um, board of Loops Expanded, the whole, uh, all of the curators, I don't remember all of them by heart, uh, but all of them, I really want to thank you that for choosing my work. It's an honor now that I know that it's been selected out of so many people. Um, and hopefully this loops expanded is going to other people, other places, other countries. And I will be happy to participate in more projects. And uh, thank you so much for this interview, Alison. It was a pleasure. Thank you too, Shahar. Uh, it was an amazing conversation uh, and it's so nice uh, for your kind uh, way of um, framing um, the openness of your work and by putting it available to anyone. Um, but on the other hand, now we might have the opportunity to, under safe conditions, to have the museum experience again that we are going to share uh, here in Lisbon for the next three weeks with your uh, work. Shara, let me thank you again one more time for your time and your ability for being here. Um, Shahar uh, work, uh, DIG, you'll be uh, in exhibition at National Museum of Contemporary Art from October the 7th to the 25th um, at Sala Polivalent in Portuguese. Uh, so you're all more than invited to be there. Um, this was the first of uh, out of seven different interviews we are going to have the, uh, at this channel. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you one more time, Shahar. Who knows, we can meet here in Lisbon or um, it looks expanded in Israel next year. Who knows? It will happen. It will happen. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.